All right, welcome everybody to this K-Base webinar. My name is Benjamin Allen. I am a uh, technician for the K-Base project uh, based out in Oak Ridge National Lab. Today, we're gonna be talking about uh, drafting isolate genomes in K-Base and some of the unique tools that we have to really make uh, great genomes, to, to not just um, assemble them, but Im improve those assemblies and really, uh, uh, make something high quality uh, to share with everybody. Um, so this is the tutorial we will be looking at today. Uh, you can find this um, in KBase by going from the uh, Narratives Navigator section. You can go to the tutorials, and uh, right now it's at the top, but it's called Microbial Genomics in KBase. And this is the first in a series of trainings and tutorials we're making for uh, microbiologists to uh, learn how to use some of the uh, tools in the system and run through some of the common workflows that you might find useful for your research. Um, so this kind of lays out some of the basic information about this training and what we're looking to do here, but I'm just gonna kind of jump right into it since we've got a lot to cover. Um, so, Right, with the advent of next-gen sequencing technology, we have uh, generated lots and lots and lots of uh, DNA sequences for all sorts of organisms. And um, with the advances in com computational technology, we are able to um, produce uh, assembled and annotated genomes for that sequencing data um, faster than ever. And um, so, Part of the challenge that we have is um, not just how do we make those genomes, how do we uh, how do we make them high quality, and how do we share the highest quality genomes that we can make with the broader community of researchers that might be interested in the same kind of uh, scientific questions we are looking at. Um, so this example today, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested in stuff like bioremediation and environmental microbiology. So I tend to uh, look at, you know, a heavy metal and sulfur, sulfur reducing uh, bacteria. This is, uh, this is uh, the organism that we're going to use as an example today. Disulfobaculum zeaminense is a uh, is a novel, um, novel uh, proposed, uh, you know, uh, species that uh, is recently isolated um, from mangrove sediment in um, in China, and you can read about this particular, uh, you know, organism in this paper. But I kind of picked it because there's really not many papers about it. It's a new organism. Um, there's really not much research about it other than um, this sort of initial. Um, uh, genome that's been put out. And so what uh, it, it, this, this was published in 2012 and in 2020, there was a, uh, or 2019, there was a, a resequencing effort done at JGI to get a high coverage um, resequence of this genome. And so this, and this is part of the, um, the DSM uh, library in Germany. So they you know, sequenced many thousands of uh, novel species, and they they have a lot of efforts over there to sequence novel species. So anyway, it's just a good example for us to kind of treat like a novel organism or something that we've recently isolated and that we want to um, clean up the reeds, assemble them, and annotate them. Um, in particular, I got this uh, data directly from JGI, and you can see this little GIF here about uh, our JGI search interface. This was the feature I was referring to in the intro that we're doing some work on. Uh, and you can see what happens here is that I transfer this data from JGI into my um, data import panel. Um, so I did this many, many uh, months ago, so it, you don't see it here now. But if you go to our YouTube, you can look at the data import uh, tutorial video to see all in-depth detail about how to import uh, data into KBase. But long story short, I pull it into that space, and then I open up this importer app. Uh, where I am able to select the uh, all of the data and pull it into the um, narrative here as a reads library. So 
Here I have a reads library. I've just called it by its DSM catalog number. Uh, again, just sort of uh, feigning a little bit of mystery about <laughs> what it might be. Um, and because we'll learn later on about you know doing some of the uh, assignment of taxonomy to it and how we organize that in KBase. But so I have uh, pulled this data into my narrative here. Um, I'm making a few assumptions about uh, the the um, user level of everybody today. I'm not really talking. They're going to do too much introduction to the narrative. Again, there's other um, tutorials out there about that, but. I will refer to some aspects of, um, of KBase, like the narrative interface, the data panel, the apps panel, um, et cetera. So nevertheless, this is um, uh, the narrative here, the, the sort of main part of the screen and um, where you can see that I've got my data, I've got um, some context and, uh, and I'm running different tools on it. Um, so you can pull your reads library into KBase here, and you can see uh, you know, as you pull it in, you can assign some metadata like sequencing platform, um, you know, insert size and standard deviation. If I go to the stats, I can see information about uh, you know how many reads there are, the mean mean standard deviation of the length, you know, replicates, uh, and some information about the score. Um, I'm going to just go to the data panel here. And one thing I'm going to do is sort my data here just by when I pulled it in. So this will kind of follow chronologically what, um, you know, starting with the reads, everything that's generated downstream from that. Um, but uh, so here we have it. This is my reads library. Um, and what I want to do after I've got my reads is I want to do some quality assessment. So there's a couple of tools for doing that in KBase. Most of the uh, tools in this section you're going to find uh, in the apps uh, panel here under read processing. So you can just see there's a lot of different uh, tools down here. So all of these ones in pink that I've uh, got, uh, I pulled from this section of the app panel. Uh, the first one here is uh, assess read quality with FastQC. Uh, if you've ever done any uh, QA, QC stuff with uh, uh, genomes before, you're probably familiar with FastQC. Um, so uh, I'll just show this is very simple. Uh, when you're when you're when you put this uh, app into your narrative, you just select the read library and you hit the run button and it generates a report for you about um, about your read library statistics and uh, some information that is useful to you before you assemble your genome. So I just clicked the view report in separate window here because we're dealing with a paired in library. We have page one for the forward and two for the reverse uh, strand of the paired in library. And so this is before any you know, quality control or anything, these are just the raw reads. Um, you can see these are pretty high quality reads. This is of course what we'd expect from JGI. The, the quality scores are, are consistently uh, high quality across. Uh, you don't see any bubbles here in the sequence, uh, the per tile sequence quality. Uh, overall, this is what we would expect these days from, uh, you know, an Illumina DNA sequencer. Um, what we're seeing, because this is um, raw reads, we're seeing some overrepresented sequences. These are uh, almost certainly the primers uh, from the, or the adapters from the um, uh, Illumina sequencer. So this is one of the things that we're going to want to remove uh, from the reads, the raw reads before we proceed to the assembly phase. Um, so there's plenty of information elsewhere about how to use QC, uh, sorry, FastQC. I've got, I try to put these kind of links to other resources um, throughout uh, the, the tutorial. Uh, so you can, you know, learn how to, read the FASTQC report at more in depth at this uh, Michigan State website. 
link here. The other one that we're going to look at as far as the QA apps go is this one, Compute Simple Read Library Stats. And I, I like this one because it is, as it says, it computes simple read library stats. You put in the reads and what it gives you is this very, very simple report. Some of this information is already contained in the um, uh, uh, the, the reads library data object, as we would call it in KBase speak, um, that's this right here, the data object. Um, but what it also tells you is, you know, it gives you an, another read on looking at your duplicate sequences. And so I can see those same primers uh, here, as well as some uh, uh, mononucleotide uh, repeat sequences. So what we're going to do now is remove both those adapters and those long repeats. Um, so uh, there's those are the FastQC and the uh, um, Compute Simple Read Library Stats app. So that's our QA phase. Now we're going to go into the reads quality control. So in the past, and I'll talk about some of the other alternative options later. In the past, we've used another very common tool, Trimomatic, for doing the trimming of these adapter sequences. Um, I've switched this around in this tutorial to now use the uh, run the JGI RQC filter pipeline BB tools version 38.22 app. Um, because this is the only place that this tool outside of JGI is deployed. You can't get this, um, you can't run this uh, anywhere else except KBase right now uh, as a way to uh, do uh, QA and QC on your reads. Um, so it's one of our unique tools. Um, I used it in part because I wanted to replicate the um, assembly protocol used by JGI for this organism. And of course, they're using the in-house tool. So I'm also using their uh, in-house tool that we have uh, unique to KBase uh, to do this. Um, so this tool does uh, a couple of, it's sort of a, a, um, a do-it-all pipeline tool. That's part of why I like it is because instead of having to run many apps, um, you can run uh, one app and get cleaned data. Um, you can read all about the, the specific steps of BB Tools um, here and, and what it uses to do its uh, pipeline, but um, Yes, so, but in short, it does adapter trimming. It, it can filter out contaminants from all sorts of organisms, do deduplication, error correction. And so it does a lot of functions. Really what we're just doing here uh, is, is uh, trimming the adapter sequences. So similarly, I set the reads uh, library to those raw reads uh, for Illumina library fragment is, is what you're going to want here. Um, I don't recommend changing that. Um, the main thing I want to ch uh, check here is trim Illumina adapter sequences, including TrueSeq and Nextera. This is going to trim off those adapter sequences. You know, if you don't know uh, what adapter you have, um, I, I think I've got a link to it up uh, above, but you can look in Illumina's website and there's PDFs and, and, and spreadsheets where they've got all of their uh, adapter sequences. So you can sometimes search for those duplicated sequences against um, what's you know Illumina's chemistry library. So that'll tell you what um, you need to pull off. Um, but generally, you know, speaking, we you know these days, uh, it's pretty common for uh, people to have Illumina sequencer uh, sequence data. So you may uh, likely just need to check this, and that will take care of it. Um, we're going to trim from both e re uh, both ends of the reads, um, and you know, if you're dealing, let's say, with right, you may be a human microbiome researcher. Um, or you know another microbiome researcher for a cat, dog, mouse, uh, and you can re remove any um, contaminant reads that you might uh, not want to feed into your assembly from you know your the environmental context of your organism that you're looking at. So this allows you to to filter some of those. Uh, 
I've checked remove duplicate reads here as well. And this is just, uh, you know, deduplicating any, um, any, you know, well overly duplicated sequences. Um, and then I set my output. Um, so I ran this tool and I can see the result tab here. Um, this is where if you have any um, tables or graphics generated by K-based apps, you will see, uh, see this put out in the report. So I can see how many input reads there were um, and how many were filtered out output, you know, to sort of check. Um, and this, is, this looks good to me. Uh, and I can check that it's good because I can then rerun this compute simple read lines library stats. And again, I can see now that those adapter um, sequences are removed, but there is still this long, um, th this long guanine repeat here. Uh, and, you know, it seems like it's been duplicated quite a bit. So I'm just going to clean that out as well before I uh, assemble my reads. So to do that, I use this tool filter out low complexity reads with PrintSeq, uh, which does exactly what it says. It filters out low complexity rules, uh, reads just like a long sequence of, you know, guanine. So, um, and what it produces as output, of course, is just another filtered read library, but um, it also produces uh, two, uh, you know, libraries, single end libraries with all of the uh, things that it has filtered out. Um, so, if you want to just check to make sure, uh, you know, there was some, wasn't something in there that you needed, you can look at those, uh, those uh, other outputs there. And then once again, I can run this, you know, I could run this through FastQC if I wanted, but, you know, part of the simplicity of the compute simple read library stats app is that it's very fast and simple. And there you see, I no longer have that, um, that long guanine repeat sequence there. So, uh, that to me uh, looks like we're pretty good here. Um, so then I'm I, I'm going to run it back through FastQC once again, and uh, now I have no overrepresented sequences, and you know everything else looks pretty good overall. Um, so now we have done uh, QA and QC on these. Uh, these reads, there are other tools uh, that you might be interested in. Um, oh yeah, here's the link to that uh, chemistry documentation. Um, but some of the other tools that are commonly used, Trimomatic, I used to use Trimomatic uh, in this tutorial. Um, I'll just open it up here and then you can see how to open apps. If you're not familiar, you just click the, the name there and it puts it uh, in the cell below, uh, whichever cell you have selected you can tell by the green border there. Um, so you can do the same kind of stuff that you can do in FastQC, set the adapter libraries, um, change your minimum quality window and, and do the same kind of stuff. But uh, so uh, that's another option if uh, for whatever reason, maybe RF, FTC, uh, our, RFC filter is not working for you. RQC, sorry, lots of acronyms. Um, the other one, if you're dealing with um, Illumina data that you might be interested in is the Bloom filter read error correction. So uh, this filters out some of the common uh, um, sequencer-based errors that you might have with uh, using Illumina chemistry. And finally, if you just, whatever you run all of these tools and if maybe you have really old data or something that uh, you know isn't using uh, you know modern chemistry uh, you can use cut adapt which is very straightforward um, you tell it the the input reads and then you type in manually the sequence that you want to remove and filter from each uh, end of the uh, adapters and it will remove that so, that's sort of the most granular level uh, you can get to with um, doing some of the filtering in, in KBase. All right, so that's the QA, QC phase of this process. Now we've, uh, so just to review, we've, we've taken a look at our reads and we've cleaned them up. Uh, for this example, you know, I didn't, we maybe will make an example of some uh, 
uh, nastier reads uh, later on because uh, these were very high quality reads. Um, so, but uh, you know, you we maybe we'll make some examples with some more tricky data later on. But uh, you know, hopefully that gives you a sense of what some of the uh, options are out there for doing this in KBase. So you'll also just see, I mean, in case you are dealing with lots of read libraries, there's some different utilities here. Uh, for merging or splitting read libraries, um, translating li read libraries quality scores. Um, you know, these are utilities that uh, maybe you're not, um, you know, may, may not use them every day, but sometimes in special circumstances, um, they are useful. So, uh, but you'll find all of that stuff under the read processing category in the apps panel. Um, so next step is that we want to do de novo assembly of reads. This is just a little short ex explainer here about De Bruyne graphing uh, in case you're interested or your students are interested. Ma many of you who've done this will have some degree of familiarity with it, but basically uh, what De Bruyne graphing allows us to do is um, with the short reads that get generated from Illumina sequencers, uh, is able to uh, use um, specific lengths of strings of, uh, you know, ATCG to uh, which we call k-mers. Uh, so k being the value, the number of, of strings that, uh, the, uh, the, the, the number of, of uh, characters in that string that are used to um, measure across uh, the read, uh, the read library length and Build out these uh, you know, to topographic graphs of uh, the um, the assembly, where it's trying to basically build out the longest strings possible, the longest contiguous strings possible from all of the um, sequencing data that you put in. I think a, a good analogy, and you've probably heard this one before, but is to think of this like a jigsaw puzzle, right? We th can think of a building a genome like putting together a jigsaw puzzle where you get the box and you dump all of the pieces on the floor and you know there's thousands of pieces and you're tracing the edges of each one of those pieces to uh, build out the picture that you're trying to build and not unlike a, 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 a jigsaw puzzle you know you may not need to assemble a uh, hundred percent of the the puzzle to see, okay, well, you know, that looks like the Eiffel Tower or the Mona Lisa or whatever the, the, the puzzle is representing. So genomics is very similar in that we may not get a perfect assembly of, um, of a linear genome or circular genome, right? Uh, for a bacteria where, you know, our kind of general expectation that is certainly not universal, but general expectation is that uh, with, with prokaryotes is that we might have uh, a single circular piece of uh, DNA that uh, contains all of the, um, the genomic content of that organism. Um, so we want to, that's sort of the ideal is to get to that fully uh, assembled um, uh, uh, genome where you have a, a, a linear genome. Or, or a circular genome, right? You can uh, touch both ends of the lines and make a circle. Um, and we, but we of course rely on computational tools to do this um, uh, quickly these days, rather than having somebody, uh, you know, by hand and eye and mind trace out uh, and do the alignment and build out the the uh, consensus sequence of the of that genome. So. Um, we rely on tools to do this these days. What I'm going to show you now is some of the uh, tool, tools that we can both use to generate a draft assembly and to improve that assembly. And that's sort of the uh, exciting part that I'm really excited to show you all today. Um, so again, maybe if you've done this before, uh, you're probably familiar with spades or maybe you've had to run spades before. Uh, this is one of the most popular and common um, and, and most well-maintained and updated um, genome assemblers that we have uh, these days. Um, there's different flavors of spades for uh, isolates, for plasmids, for metagenomes, for all sorts of different uh, contexts. 
Um, and of course, we're using this one here to uh, do an isolate assembly here. And so what I've uh, done here is uh, we're going to do a little bit of or show you this kind of comparative assembly that I've done where, um, you know, because again, KBase is this wonderful free online platform that, uh, you know, uses Department of Energy supercomputers to do all of the uh, processing. Um, you know, I can run several, I don't have to necessarily uh, be as economistic about how we are, um, uh, you know, using our, our computing power. I can run multiple jobs at once with different parameters. I can check the parameters against each other from the outputs and see which one is best. So this is something I encourage folks to do in KBase is to uh, do comparative analysis. If you don't know what the parameters are, you're trying to figure them out. Um, you know, with a, a tool, you can run the app multiple times with different parameters and see how those change um, your outputs. So, um, so what I'm doing here with spades, I'll just, before I open all these, so I, am, I, I, that's another K-based tip is sometimes if you're, uh, if you have a lot of apps in one narrative, uh, and it's taking a long time for your narrative to load, you can uh, collapse and expand these cells. Uh, so I'm sort of expanding these as I move down. Um, so I've, plugged in my read library here um, that I generated that's I can tell it's my filtered and my um, uh, it's my filtered read set um, because I gave it a, a name that uh, is useful. I, uh, another kind of tip here is give your uh, output data objects useful names because really especially if you're dealing with lots of data or you're do, doing multiple iterations of you know, running apps in the system, it's easy to get lost. Trust me, it's, it, you can quickly forget where something came from uh, or how it was generated or when it was generated. So um, in this instance, I have, uh, I, for, for me personally, what I will do is as I uh, extend out the analysis on any kind of data type, I append the name of the app and I will always, even though it, it you know, it's stored in the metadata for the data object, I, I still always will put dot whatever the date is from year month uh, uh, to date here because, you know, especially if you're, you know, a tool gets updated or you're running multiple iterations, that helps just kind of separate things so you don't accidentally overwrite stuff. Okay, anyway, on to spades. Um, so I run three different um, flavors of spades here. Uh, one is using the automatic uh, Kamer size detection. So basically uh, spades uh, takes a look at the library statistics and makes a calculation on the most efficient set of Kamers uh, it can select to efficiently run the tool, not necessarily create the best assembly, but to uh, efficiently run the tool. Um, so I don't, in the in the advanced parameters, you'll see this in different apps. Some apps have advanced parameters. You can show or hide them by clicking that button. Um, I don't really change anything. I just sort of loaded this up. Um, I changed one thing, I take that back. I, I changed the minimum contig length from 500 to 2000, just to do a little uh, stricter filtering about the uh, the contigs that get included in the assembly. Um, by It's pretty common these days actually to see assembler set to 2000, uh, by default it's set to 500 here. It just kind of depends on the organism that you're dealing with. You know, if it has some super small proteins, um, then you may want a lower contig length. Um, but for our purposes, 2000 is, is perfectly good. Um, I didn't change anything about the, um, about the sequencing uh, source here. Um, and I didn't add any camera sizes. So uh, this is just is doing automatic uh, assembly here. So I'll close that one. I'll show the next one here is that I, I labeled protocol. And this one, I, again, replicated the, um, uh, sorry, I just jumped over to this page, but uh, the, 
way this was done by JGI initially. So in, in gold, you can uh, access all of the information about the sequencing, but basically uh, you can find out whatever they did in their assembly. And again, I was trying to sort of replicate their um, protocols to, uh, to see if I could improve the assembly here. So, uh, and this is what, um, the, what I've changed to match with the, the protocol is to add these specific KMER sizes. So again, in, uh, in de novo assembly, each uh, one of these sizes refers to the window of which it's looking across all of the value, all, all of the content of the, the string uh, of DNA sequences, and it's uh, trying to uh, build out that alignment. So, um, you know, this is like, you can think of it like this is a 25 mer, 55 mer, this is 55 base pairs of link that it's going to move across that, uh, you know, put up to 151 base uh, pair length um, Illumina sequencing data. So it's moving along that, um, uh, that, that read and trying to identify the points of overlap with every other read in the library. So, uh, so they set up to 95. And then, you know, I, for this last one, if you look into the spades manual, it sort of tells you how to max out the gamer values, just what it sort of recommends as the maximum values you can use with super high quality Illumina sequencing data. So I just sort of put those values into uh, the camera sizes here. And so you can see it goes up to 127 mer length. Um, so this, as you might expect, is going to take more computational time because it's measuring uh, and building out these uh, points of overlap um, based off of uh, uh, you know, looking at longer lengths across the string. And I'll show you some more stuff in KBase. Um, show. So the auto took a little longer to run, probably because it had to determine that. But I guess they actually took all about the same time to run, um, 55, you know, just about an hour to run. But uh, anyway, the results from each of these is a, a, symbol, a, a genome assembly. Um, and it can be hard to look at all of the stats that come out of this assembly uh, on their own. Um, so what we can, what I'll do before I talk about these stats is I'll show uh, some of the quality assessment tools for assembly. Uh, so there are two in particular, and, and just to the question in the chat, yes, absolutely, you can access this software freely uh, in, in any country of the world um, uh, and create an account and use all these tools. So feel, feel free to uh, create an account and, and try some of this stuff yourself. Um, so two tools in particular uh, for doing the comparison are compare assembled context distribution and assess quality of assemblies with PLOS. I'm actually gonna move that one up and I'm going to expand the cell. And so now I get the same report that you see here, but it's looking at all of these three assemblies side by side. So, um, so just kind of going down what uh, these stats mean, you know, some of you may be familiar with this, uh, but some of you may not be. So um, Quas gives you, you know, this nice heat map in case you don't want to think too much about the numbers, but of course you should think about the uh, numbers and what they mean. Uh, but, you know, it kind of tells you what the best and worst is, whether it's blue or it's red, but um, there's a little bit of nuance in that, depending on what you're looking at. So uh, you can see I've got the automatic, the protocol parameters, and then my maximum camer is what I called it. Um, and uh, right, like I said, our goal with assembly is to build out the longest contiguous DNA sequence. So a contig uh, is a shorthand word for contiguous DNA sequence. And like I said, with the bacteria, what we might expect, uh, you know, theoretically is that it's got one contiguous DNA sequence representing its whole genome. Um, so that's kind of the ideal. Um, so I'll just let me pop back to this. Um, uh, where did I have it? Here? Um, 
here it is, sorry. Um, these are these are the, the same assembly as uh, it's it's logged in uh, in SRA um, or on the NCBI website. I can see information about you know how it was assembled and et cetera. And uh, I didn't I don't know if I mentioned it, but you know, because this is a resequencing project, um, it's great for testing some of these uh, you know improving the assembly because we have super high coverage uh, across the genome. Um, so that means we just have a lot of depth of um, sequencing of all of the nucleotides in the genome. And you know if we have higher coverage, we expect that we ha can have a arrive at a, a better consensus sequence for. The, the organisms genome. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that this is uh, uh, the stats that came out of the original um, assembly was that they had 10 contigs, that the contig in 50 uh, was, which is sort of a median statistic, sort of telling you uh, at which length over half of the content of your, uh, is, um, which length of the context is over half of the content of the total genome, uh, uh, you know, what, what's the kind of median point of that? So usually a higher in uh, 50 value means you have a better genome assembly because over the the majority of the contigs are biased towards longer contigs rather than shorter contigs. If the N50 is a smaller value, it's uh, it means that the balance it's on on balance. Uh, Relative to your total um, total length is uh, is balanced towards shorter contigs. So anyway, raising this value relative to the total sequence length is sort of what you want to do. Um, and then this is the, the number of those contigs that uh, that you might have that contain this uh, L50 is the number of contigs uh, that you have that contain this amount of L50 <laughs> or N50 base pair sequences. So again, you want this one to be lower and you want this one to be higher overall. But this is what the original assembly had. So two, uh, you know, N50 is uh, 1.15 million, uh, you know, L50 is two. I can go back to this. Uh, and I see, uh, you know, one thing that's different, uh, sorry, I'm gonna jump back and forth, is that you can see they used an older version of spades because this was done a couple of years ago. So they did version 3.13.0. Well, I am doing this with 3.15.3. So this is a few versions later, maybe they've made improvements that would uh, under affect the underlying assembly. But nevertheless, uh, this is what we get actually uh, relative to that original assembly. Uh, the auto, auto magic, uh, one uh, produced about the same um, about the same stats all around. The N50 value is lower. The on the protocol paper we get uh, very close to what the what's documented here um, in the other one, which you have you know 1.55 uh, you know 1 million 155 thousand some odd um, base pair length. So that's what we'd expect. And then uh, the last one, uh, the max gamer, you can see I can, am able to you know, marginally increase the uh, N50 um, uh, value a little bit, but I am able to reduce the number of contigs down to seven. So it's 10 in that original and, uh, and uh, seven here, nine here. So it, it, you know, maybe whatever improvements they made to spades knocked, you know, that 10th contig into a ninth contig when following the same protocol values and, you know, using some of these larger Kamer values, we were able to, uh, once again, merge some of these um, smaller contigs into larger contigs. So build out that, um, the length of that. And you get a nice graph here that kind of shows you, right, this, uh, green one is that Max Camer one, and you can see that uh, the uh, this is sort of the X is the contig number here, and the Y is the uh, length total cumulative length. So you can see again, this is sort of showing you that the cumulative length is balanced towards fewer and longer contigs. So that's what we want. Um, okay, so that's quast. I know I'm I'm going a little slow, and I, and I haven't even gotten to the the cherry on top, but I assure you we'll get there soon. Um, 
The next one I just want to show this is a similar one uh, is compare assembled contig distributions. This just generates some more plots uh, where you can take a look uh, at this, the distribution of the links across your um, assemblies. So uh, another, uh, an, actually, we'll show that one uh, next. Ooh, that was unexpected behavior. Um, here we go. So another very important tool for especially genome announcements is CheckM. Um, CheckM is a general quality uh, assessment tool used to, uh, you know, especially take a look at if you have contamination. You know, you're dealing with an isolate. You, of course, hope you really don't have much contamination, if any. Um, but uh, you know, maybe you have mags, maybe you have environmental samples. This is probably even more important in that context. Uh, but really what you want to see is, yeah, again, green across the board is the graphical representation, but I can go to the check-in table. And, you know, this basically uh, takes a look based off of, you know, sets of, uh, of uh, you know, markers established from looking at many, many thousands of genomes, sort of uh, how you can um, assess uh, if there's any contamination or if there, what you might expect the completeness of your genome is based off of um, the sequences that are in it. So it's really just sort of a way to assess, okay, you know, is this really uh, the isolate I'm looking for? Is there contamination or did I, you know, between assembly and filtering, did I miss anything? Um, and again, this is very clean and nice data, so it uh, looks very uh, perfect here. 100% uh, complete and uh, less than 2% um, uh, contamination there. Uh, this next tool I'm going to show is, uh, is uh, you, you know, anyone who's done genomics in the past couple of years is probably familiar with the Sarcos uh, visualization tool. Uh, this is one, one of a uh, of two vi genome visualization tools that we have in KBase. Uh, I'll say, honestly, if you're trying to uh, build genome visualizations, take your data off KBase, download the Circos package on your computer, and you're going to have a lot more <laughs> capability to build the beautiful uh, circular genome graph that you deserve uh, for your publication. But we're, uh, you know, part of that is just because we are uh, working a lot on more on the back end data stuff and trying to build out some of the you know automated analytical features uh, right now more than we are uh, adding a lot of new visualization capability. But nevertheless, uh, this is a uh, an iteration of Circos that we put in to uh, KBase to allow you to visualize uh, your your assemblies. Um, Right now, you can find this in the beta app. So if you see my mouse hovering over the R in the apps panel here, if I click this, and now I have all of the beta apps. Um, so I can type in Circos, and there you see visualize assembly coverage using Circos. So now I've taken the um, output of spades, I've plugged it into this, and uh, you know, this is, like I said, a super high coverage um, uh, genome. So uh, the, you, you, know, you might have some other colors here for where it's green if it was low coverage, uh, indicating the coverage, but uh, you can see those seven contigs and, and, and visualize the length of those seven contigs. And so we've got five decently sized one and then two, um, you know, small contigs here that might be uh, points of investigation later on. Um, and this graph will come back later on, um, say for anyone timing, you know, I know we're at the top of the hour here, uh, I probably got another 15 minutes, um, if you can stick around that long. Um, but uh, so between these tools, you can really uh, get a good sense of like, did I, uh, build a high quality assembly uh, or not. Um, so um, the last part here is uh, doing annotation of that assembly. So right, we, uh, we've built out uh, you know, long strings of uh, DNA sequence uh, as long as we think we can using our assemblers to represent our organism's genome. And now we want to 
uh, take a look at all of that content and assign terms uh, to this organism and its content and say, well, this is what the organism is and this is what the genes inside the organism are and this is what we're calling them. So one of the ways we can do that is with um, uh, annotation tools and uh, you know what, what these tools essentially do is take a look at the sequence you've assembled. They identify where, uh, you know, the start and stop sequences um, of your nucleotides are, and then it layers, adds layers of information on top of that, including, you know, terms for the functional, for any protein that might be produced by that sequence. Um, you know, so it, it adds, it adds both term, uh, 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 adds layers for both the um, coding DNA sequence, the MRA uh, sequence um, as well um, for any, um, you know, any uh, feature identified in that genome. So right now, um, let me go back to the release tools here and uh, get rid of my search. Um, you'll find all of these tools in genome annotation. Uh, Maybe I should have mentioned too with the assembly, you will of course find those tools in genome assembly and you can see there's a lot of different uh, assemblers in there, uh, including some that are unique to hate K-base like uh, HITMER as far as you know, public access goes. So there may be other assemblers that for you depending on the data that you have, maybe you have long and short reads and so you can use hybrid spades um, uh, or unicycler or uh, HITMER, et cetera. But, uh, we're talking about annotation now. So genome annotation, uh, the main two tools for genome annotation that we have um, for prokaryotes, we have one called PRACA. Um, some of you may be familiar with PRACA. Um, it, you can see in some of these notes, maybe we argue that uh, for just general feature analysis, PRACA might be the stronger of the two um, tools that we have. The second tool being RAST, um, the rapid annotation uh, using subset, sub, um, oh, I can't even remember now, <laughs> uh, subsystem technology, yeah, that's it, um, tool. And that is important. Uh, we're actually rebuilding RASP right now. It's being recoded. Um, so I think we're going to see, and probably in the next year, a, a new version of this. And you know, you'll see over in the apps panel, there's a, you know a couple of different versions of RASP actually. So we're going to be consolidating these tools. And um, and yeah, but they're I think the, they're trying to migrate some of the code from Perl to Python and. Uh, you know, KBase is a very Python friendly system um, in this whole uh, interface here is actually built on Jupyter Notebook. So anyway, we like to sort of snap things into the Python language. Um, anyway, so for uh, annotation, there's a, uh, these are our two main annotation apps. Um, but one thing I just want to say before we do the annotation is that in KBase, when you go from uh, your reads to your assembly to then your annotated genome here, which I'm just trying to show these in the data panel here, um, you have to assign to your genome a taxonomic value. You need to specify down to the best of your ability what organism uh, is it that you have here, because um, in the genome data objects in KBase, there is a uh, a taxonomic uh, hierarchy that gets established with them. So, uh, so that some of the tools that we are making for our automated analysis are uh, able to um, ac accurately compare, you know, apples to apples as far as what uh, the assertion of what the taxonomy of any given organism is. So, you know, maybe you have no idea. Uh, and, uh, you know, what I kind of say here is, is, is that the taxonomy th that we use in the system is based off of NCBI taxonomy. So if you're uncertain, you can always go to this, uh, uh, this taxonomy browser here and uh, we're looking, look at the tree and try to see what the tax ID value is for this. Another way, and this is just this is both a way to you know help prepare your data, but also a way to shout out some of the cool tools that we have. 
one of the ways you can do this, if you're saying, oh, I don't know what it is, or I, I need an assertion of what the uh, taxonomy is, is you can use uh, GTDBK, uh, GTDBTK, that is, uh, which is the Genome Taxonomy Database, um, which is a fantastic tool that's becoming very popular in the taxonomy space. Um, that it has its own, you know, curated library. It uses a combination of, of um, you know, reference gene calls as well as uh, topographic um, and ANI scoring. Uh, analysis to make taxonomic calls. So you can do this without an annotated uh, genome. You can do this with just an assembly. So I say that, I'll show you why that matters here in a second, uh, but just so, you know, we're sort of pretending we don't know what this organism is uh, from the DSM catalog. Uh, I plug it in the GTDBK, uh, TK, sorry, <laughs> a lot of acronyms here. Um, and what it does is it uh, takes this um, assembly and analyzes, uh, analyzes it against its own kind of curated reference database, as well as um, you know, does ANI, uh, that's average nucleotide identity scores uh, across um, its own sort of um, taxonomic library. So what you can see is, you know, getting 100% ANI, which is like, a direct hit uh, match and you know, very high amino acid um, identity score with this organism that we kind of already knew it was, but uh, that just sort of validates um, some of the placement or you know, provides you a line of evidence for uh, the next thing that you will do, which is uh, annotate and build your genome using one of these tools, RAST or um, RAS or uh, Paraka. And yes, uh, thank you, uh, Noriko. And uh, you mentioned gotcha in the chat. And I'll just, oh, we have um, a version of gotcha. I think it's in beta actually. I don't know. But I, I think we're adding it to the system right now. I thought it was in here. Um, <laughs> it's. Yes, gotcha too. Sorry, uh, mis missing the uh, missing the second T there with my search. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, yeah, gotcha too. Uh, you can uh, classify the taxonomy of reads using gotcha as well. So thanks for that tip in the chat there. Um, yep. Uh, so um, uh, th thanks everyone for staying with me. I've got just another ten minutes here, and we'll get to the end of it. But. Uh, Anyway, so you can so when you are doing your genome annotation in KBase, right? We select our uh, genome, or we select our assembly. Or if you have a genome that you wish to reannotate, you can uh, reannotate it using the annotate genome slash assembly with RAS TK tool. I select my assembly. I um, uh, this is by default, you know, going to be 11, the genetic code. And the scientific name field, it doesn't quite show it here in the already ran version. So let me just show you quickly uh, with a uh, fresh version what the scientific name field looks like. Uh, so this is going to, when you click this, it's going to give you a, you know, an empty search here. But if I type in, you know, desulfo, Back, you know, you can start to see that it's uh, we load up this taxon the ID database, and and one of the important things here is you know right we you can't always make a great claim of the tax of the taxonomic assertion for your organism. So NCBI has all of these taxonomy IDs for things that are you know this is like you know the genus this is this is we know this is what this is. But you know, maybe this is an uncultured or unidentified or unknown. There's all sorts of uh, different, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, modifier terms that are in the uh, taxonomy uh, NCBI taxonomy ID database. Uh, anyway, I just showing how both of these tools uh, look. Um, so this is uh, this is. The annotation report from RAST. Uh, again, you can open this report in a separate window, do some more searching on it. It looks a little different with PRACA. What I'll do now is show you just both of these uh, 
genomes as uh, you know a, what we call a genome data object in Kbase. So I clicked both of the names of these in the data panel, and um, you can now browse all of the features in either of these genomes. What you'll see is you get IDs, you get a characterization of the type, you get uh, some stipulation of what the function is, if there's other terms, ontological terms assigned to that uh, gene feature. You can see the start, strand, length, uh, which contig it's located on. You can browse the individual contig. So, you know, maybe I want to look at those small contigs and say, hey, what's in here? And I see, okay, there's these are some uh, RNA type stuff. So it may not necessarily be uh, you know, even really part of the you know, proper DNA genome of the organism. Um, but uh, nevertheless, you can use this genome browser to look at uh, your data in the um, narrative here. You can also, if I click just below the name here, uh, we don't put this right out front here, but you can uh, click this explore data tab. Um, and yeah, just seeing that question in the chat, yes, you can make pan genomes using bacteria, and that will be the subject of part three of this series, probably uh, later on this year. Um, anyway, um, so this is another way of looking at the same uh, information. Uh, you can see a little bit more, uh, you know, categorization of um, you know the content of each contig here. Uh, at some point in the near future, these tabs like related data and linked samples. Uh, linked samples is, uh, um, you know, Zach is going to give a, a presentation on samples in a few weeks. Uh, and, you know, he'll kind of talk about uh, some of what this tab means. But, uh, you know, you may have lots of genomes uh, linked to some environmental sampling data. We'll also, with some of this, what we're building with the yeah, what we're calling the knowledge engine, this related data, we hope will uh, soon shine bright, full of uh, hits <laughs> to uh, this uh, organism and other things. One of the other nice things about Kbase is, uh, is that we have uh, really good provenance tracking. So what you're looking at here is um, a sort of a provenance flow from of the origins and, and endpoints of this uh, data that we're dealing with here. So I can, at each one of these phases, I can see stuff about the parameters used. I can, you know, this is really important for the reproducibility factor for, you know, you know how was this genome made, you know, five years ago versus now, or what, what did they run? You know, you can track this kind of stuff uh, a lot better in Kbase um, than some of the other things that are out there, uh, in, in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, anyway, uh, again, like I said, there's really not many uh, publications about this, but you can, uh, this will search uh, the, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the tool, but there's a, a publication search uh, attached to the genome level here. Um, anyway, so that was the RAST genome we're looking at. Just to give you a little bit of the sense of difference, uh, you can see uh, in the PRACA genome, there's a little bit of difference in terms of how the feature IDs are labeled, uh, how it, um, you know, what it has uh, stipulated as the function for these things. You know, if I want to search for something, I can type uh, a term in, whether that's an alias or a functional term or a feature ID, it will filter the list. Um, down to that, and you know, maybe I can uh, look at the individual gene there, and then I see uh, a little more granular information about uh, what uh, is, is in in at you know the gene level for this. Okay, so that is uh, the we we've done QA and QC uh, on our reads. We built an assembly. We built a genome now. This is the exciting part. I, uh, I, I'm glad uh, some of you stuck around for this because this is sort of like debuting a tool that uh, is also, you know, Kbase is one of the few places this is uh, deployed uh, besides the GitHub um, for it. And uh, we, it's currently in beta. Uh, and if and you know, one of the asks to all of you today is to help us um, 
and, you know, beta test this tool so that we can uh, make it a full release soon. Uh, and so this is Yorg. Um, it was built by um, a lot of people, but uh, in particular, Lauren Louie at uh, um, Lawrence Berkeley Lab uh, is one of the lead uh, authors uh, of this tool. You can read about the publication here. Um, you can go to the GitHub um, and, uh, and you look at uh, different stuff about it. And even we've got this great profile of Lauren on our site. So, hey, if you're ever using Kbase and you, to success and you would like us to write a highlight about your work, let us know. We're happy to do that. Um, for this kind of exciting projects. But so Yorg is a interesting tool because it um, does two things. It's meant to both improve assemblies uh, and to and attempt to circularize, circularize them. So as they kind of say in their paper, they see uh, you know, the design of this tool was to, you know, as genome science and technology has changed over the years, right? Like, Many years ago, uh, in the '90s, you know, uh, you would be really trying to, you know, to 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 demonstrate that you had really sequenced and, you know, built out a genome. You would be really trying your best to, uh, you know, do things like use Sanger sequencing and building out uh, and aligning all of the reads of that uh, by hand and trying to really build out that uh, nice circular genome. And you know, as we've gotten treated to better technology and faster tools, we tend to be um, satisfied with, uh, you know, things that are faster and not necessarily always better. Um, but this is just, uh, this graphic is from the, their publication. You know, we've already kind of done what, what I've sort of showed you steps A and B here. This is step C is maybe what you do in the context of a, a metagenome assembly. But what uh, your does is really Parts its implementation in Kbase here is uh, you know parts D through uh, G here, where um, basically uh, it it, um, it uses a what it, it calls a process called read baiting, and there's this tool Mira Bait that uh, does a, a little bit of remapping of your reads uh, along the assembly and and tries to um, Basically, replicate some of those, um, you know, manual techniques that I was saying from you know the '90s. It tries to kind of uh, computationally uh, do the uh, remapping and reassembly uh, to build out these better um, assemblies, and and uses some uh, very interesting mathematical principles to attempt the. Uh, circularization process there to build out a circular genome. So this is uh, you know immediately useful for us because we're trying to deal with an isolate here, but you know contextually they uh, I, th I think mostly have designed this for uh, metagenomics where you're trying to build out uh, um, you know extract mags, metagenome annotated genomes, meta metagenome assembled genomes that is uh, from your metagenome assemblies and you know treating those uh, high quality ones as, um, as uh, putative genomes, uh, YORG is meant to really build higher quality genomes from metagenomes data, metagenomics data, but it's just as useful in the isolate context. And, you know, if you have isolates, you know, right there, five, 10, 15 years old, would really, really encourage you to try to run them through YORG to see if you can improve it. And so here's the really exciting part. Uh, uh, one, one thing I'll just sort of say uh, before I show Yorg itself is that I had to, to get this to work. Um, I had to do a, some subsampling on this particular set of reads because like I said, this is like a resequencing project. It's super high coverage. So, you know, I'm sort of sacrificing some of the reads using this for uh, to allow the tool to run to completion on Kbase, because one of the things uh, that uh, org is an iterative process, meaning that uh, it's going to run several different iterations of the same algorithm uh, pipeline, and it's going to pick the best that it, uh, you know, based on some principles that you program it with. So um, again, to find this, I'm going to go to beta apps. I'm going to type in org here. And I see, uh, I'll open up a, an empty one here. 
Um, but you, you will provide it with an assembly that you've created as well as a read set. I've found that it works uh, just as good with the filter reads as it does with the raw ones. Maybe you would recommend using the filter reads for uh, this reason I'm kind of getting into now that it's iterative. So this is going to run 10 iterations of the your uh, algorithm and then it's going to select the output based on whatever I put in here. So longest single fragment assembly is going to uh, pick the one that has the longest contig uh, of all. Um, you know, you can set other principles uh, for it as well. But just to kind of give you a sense, let's see if I can quickly find the, um, yeah, the run from earlier this year. So, you know, this job runs four days. Uh, there was another one here that took six days to run. Uh, in KBase, we have a uh, limit of processing time. So any job that you run, if it runs longer than seven days, it's just going to give you an error. Uh, that's because like, you know, this is a free and public resource, so we kind of have to have a little bit of uh, sharing um, of that. And so, you know, basically when I was first running this with the uh, completely raw reads, it was just running for many days and then falling over. So I tried to do sub some subsampling here um, and building some smaller read libraries, and that made it, um, you know, shortened the total run length down to something uh, that would fit within the window here. Um, but you can set some different parameters. Um, you know, I, I, I'm experimenting with these right now to kind of best advise people on how to use it. And, and you know, I would, again, encourage folks to use the, uh, you know, try, try this uh, beta and, and follow that beta narrative linked in the uh, Q&A there to, uh, to try your own stuff. But um, I've found that BBMAP and Bowtie 2 very sensitive have worked very well. Uh, and so let me just kind of show you the exciting part here. Um, uh, you can see I've run many, many instances of this, but um, the exciting part is, uh, is it this one? No, that is not the exciting one. <laughs> um, where's the BB map one? Sorry. This is what happens when you close too many. No, 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 no. I think it's up. Yeah, these actually just finished like right before the call today. So, oh, where did I put it? I'm sorry. Let me uh, find it down here somewhere, maybe. Ah, so this is one. Um, yes, this is one of the iterations. So you can see uh, this one uh, was able to. Um, get me down to six contigs from seven. So, but the more exciting one is the BB map one where I was able to get down to five contigs. Um, sorry, let me just try to, yes, here we go. This is the really exciting one. Um, so uh, this is this now improved assembly. And just to compare, let me go up here to the QA section where I'll show you this uh, same plot that is generated with circles. So here is my original best assembly. Um, and this is after running um, Yorg, where you can see uh, it was able to merge um, some of these smaller contigs um, into fewer contigs. So it's been able to build out this uh, genome uh, a little more. It was not able to circularize it. Um, and um, yeah, so just to that question in the chat, I mean, the main thing that I've seen is just that using the default um, um, uh, bow tie setting has sometimes, what it's done is generated uh, basically the same genome that I plugged into it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then with using BB map or the very sensitive setting on, on BB tools in that selection window, it's uh, been able to um, do some better alignment basically uh, and, and generate some better uh, outputs. 
Uh, and so this was another result that I've gotten recently. And um, so kind of trying to replicate that, you can see this one is actually even better. It's also five contigs, um, but it's built out, well, better is subjective, but it's built out some longer uh, contigs here, uh, some longer fragments than versus this original one. Um, so that's very exciting because you can, potentially improve the assemblies that you already have using this tool. Um, and like I said, you may want to play around with some of the um, uh, parameters here. Like I have found that, uh, you know, 10 iterations is a lot. So, and, and, and when you look at some of the um, content of the outputs of this, like you'll, uh, so in the output, you both get this report. Um, there's a few errors, right? Uh, this is why this isn't beta, because this should show an object here that it does indeed produce, uh, sorry, it produces these objects here, uh, you know, new assemblies. So it should show that, but it's in beta, so it doesn't. Um, in addition to those report, you know, you can download this zip file and what this will give you is information about, you know, all of the iterations it ran, all of the, the outcomes that it, uh, that it was able to um, generate before it picked, you know, the best one based off of um, whatever you told it to, to use as the principle for selecting that. So, um, yeah, again, this is the one, uh, it, it, this is a, basically a unique tool uh, to KBase right now. It is publicly out there. You can download it, the GitHub Retub, uh, repo, and, and you know, install it on your system if you want to do it in, in command line. But if you don't want to do that, this is uh, available in KBase as a beta app. And again, I uh, would encourage you all to... Um, check this uh, your beta test narrative and you know run some data that you have through it. Um, and so anyway, just I also you know re-annotate this. you can compare uh, you know if you're running this and you want to make sure that you haven't you know see if there's any more proteins that were able genes predicted or anything, you know you can re of course re-annotate it and use that as your um, use that as your genome. but uh, so um, anyway, so what we've done here uh, is we've taken our reads, done QA, QC to them, we've assembled them, we've annotated them, we've improved that genome. I'll say this, uh, uh, and, and now maybe we want to, uh, you know, take that genome and put it in a, another phylogenetic context. This is just kind of like initial an initial thing you can do with your new genome, uh, you know, you can build out a tree for it using this um, insert genome in the species tree app. So this, you know, just one quick note on some of the you know, differences in taxonomic assertion. Uh, you know, this tool insert genome in the species tree, this uses all of the reference data inside of KBase, uh, which is pulled from NCBI RefSeq. So it's going to build this, uh, it's going to do, put this phylogenetic placement in, in the context of our public data repository. You may get different results with something like GTDB because it has its own uh, repository and its own methodology for placement. So, you know, all of these uh, tools are kind of happening in a, a context of, of the, the reference data that's uh, used by the tools themselves. So, you know, that's just something where it's, you know, read the manual, read the background lit um, so that you can understand how to make the best choices with these tools. But um, so and now at this point we have, and you know, we have our genome. Uh, we could then, you know, if we wanted to, we could go into Zach's uh, MRA template we could prepare it for publication. We could, uh, you know, I could take this narrative and I could create a static narrative from it um, that I might share in that publication um, or even just a link to uh, the public narrative that I have here. Um, you know, and, and so now I, I, I might be ready to actually announce that genome. Um, so uh, that's, 
kind of it. And I appreciate y'all for staying with me a little over the hour. It's a lot of information here, but uh, I really hope that this is thorough as far as uh, building your own genomes in Kbase. So um, yeah, I'm going to take a look really quickly at the Q&A. Um, yep, sorry, I didn't show it. That's another way. Fast A&I, we have a compute A&I with Fast A&I tool. Um, minimum coverage to require, required to minimize errors in assembly. I mean, I can say that uh, Circos, <laughs> to get green in Circos instead of yellow or red, you have to get 10 times coverage. So sometimes 10 times coverage is good enough. Um, I mean, that, I would say 10 times coverage is great, uh, but you know, five to 10 is certainly acceptable. Um, you know, and there are tools that you can use to do error correction um, that might help uh, improve those. But uh, you know, ten times is great. You're, you know, this is an extraordinarily, you know, maybe even over sequenced <laughs> organism with you know, four hundred coverage. But you know, if you have something like that, uh, you know, you may want to generate uh, super high coverage. So you can, of course, uh, so, you know, submit your proposal to JGI for sure. So, yeah, thanks for uh, KBase team for providing so many good answers here. Uh, a lot of questions today is very exciting. Um, you, you can only put one of the PEVs. Uh, so, yeah, this is a in KBase, your Paradin library is going to appear as a single object. Uh, if you import it as a Paradin library, this is going to contain um, uh, both directions. So you can import the individual uh, forward and reverse strand uh, if you want to, but uh, you know it's in the way Spades is implemented in KBase. Uh, you know, you just it's meant to kind of make things easier. So uh, yeah, you just have the one object and you can plug it in, but um, let me, and uh, yeah, so you can, and maybe even I, another point through that question is, um, let's see if I open up just an empty instance here, you can add multiple read libraries into space, right? So if you actually have um, multiple, uh, strands, you know, or multiple libraries that you're trying to co-assemble, you can do that uh, in spades. So um, let me just keep looking at the questions here. Yep, there's uh, RNA-seq uh, options as well in Kbase. Um, in the paper there, we uh, maybe we'll do a webinar about that soon. Uh, filamentous fungi, uh, one, uh, yeah, it's not really possible to do the, well, you can try to use Hitmer uh, for eukaryote assembly. Um, that's not a super developed process on the system right now. Uh, the good news though for fungal researchers is that, um, I didn't mention this, um, but we, you know, in our public data repo, some of the data that we get from JGI is also the uh, mycocosm. So this is JGI's curated set of uh, fungal genomes. So um, you can at least use these for some comparative uh, analysis uh, if you need to. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as like assembling a eukaryote uh, and annotating it, it's a little difficult. Uh, it, it's not it's not quite built out on the system right now. So it's not impossible, but it's uh, pretty difficult. So, um, and uh, to make pain genomes using bacteria, yeah, I saw that in the chat, um, but uh, so we'll we'll do cover building out pan genomes in the third part of this, but uh, yeah, we do have uh, you know, ortho MCL for building pan genomes on the system. Um, I think I answered that live. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so this question, you know, plans for antibiotic resistance gene identification. So the next uh, webinar we're going to do is going to uh, teach you some of the uh, tools and tips and tricks for uh, doing gene 
identification, building out multiple sequence alignments and head and Markov models and using those HMMs as the basis of searching. So uh, please attend the next one for that uh, because, you know, we don't necessarily have these, you know, we have a lot of public data in the system. We don't really have like a public HMM library or a curated HMM library. That might be interesting interesting to find out if anything like that is out there. I'm sure there are, but you can build your own uh, head and Markov models around uh, any you know, features of interest. And yep, uh, absolutely with metagenomics, let me just say, um, Please check out if you are if you have metagenomics data. Check out this genome extraction from Shotgun Metagenome Sequence Data tutorial. And uh, any day now, uh, a paper will be coming out. A protocol paper will be coming out uh, with a protocol for this. Uh, and uh, just so you know, part of the hope of uh, building out some of these microbial isolate genomic narratives is also to, to build a protocol for doing these processes in KBase. So, um, all right, I think uh, I think we made it to the end, folks. Uh, so I really uh, appreciate everybody for sticking around. We had a great audience today. I think we hit about 120 something. Uh, so it, we're going to post the recording of this on our YouTube. Uh, if you want to share that with your colleagues or your students or watch it again later because I talk fast and you can run it at half speed. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, again, thank you all so much for attending today uh, and you know, um, looking forward to seeing uh, what you all do on the system and uh, any publications that you have coming out using KBase. Um, feel free to reach out to me directly if you ever want to do any you know, collaboration. Uh, if you have any questions or support tips, please check out our help board. Uh, and if you have general questions, you can always reach us at uh, engage at kbase.us. Uh, once again, my name is Benjamin Allen. I'm here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. You can email me here uh, if you have any uh, follow-up things you need. Um, and, but yeah, thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day. And, uh, and hopefully for all of you at the university, you're having a good start of your semester. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching this webinar. For more webinars and tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see announcements for upcoming webinars and recordings for previous webinars on our website at kbase.us slash learn. Let us know in the comments what content you'd like to see in future webinars. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at DOE KBase. And if you have questions or encounter an error when using KBase, please contact the help desk.